Hello everyone. Hello replay viewers. I know that's who pops on here first in the replay. And um, oh good, I have somebody joining me. I am Sandy Peckinpah and I'll uh, wait just a couple seconds to see if more people join us and also to tell you a little bit about myself. I scope about using uh, Dancing Crane. Thank you for joining me. I'm so happy. Um, I scope about using your life and your story as the backdrop for the greatest life. Madden Chi 4545, thank you for joining me. Um, as I said, I scope about using your life and your story, and thank you for the hearts. I use it as the backdrop for the greatest life. You can create the greatest life you ever imagine as long as you recognize your story as really the launching pad. And so now I'm going to sound. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I have a few people on, and I'm so glad. Again, um, thank you for sharing it. Yay! Squirrel friend, Dancing Crane, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. This seems to be a good time to uh, do a broadcast. I've been doing them a little bit later in the day, but I'm in California, so this is around lunchtime right now. And um, I'm so excited about this broadcast because I feel like I'm going to be talking about something that is so passionate for me, and that is about writing. But even more than it is about writing, it's about using your life story as really your best asset in creating the next part of your life, but also recognizing yourself as a writer and creator of your own story. And if you choose to be a writer, if that's your passion, then this is also about creating that part of you that allows you to recognize yourself as a writer. You know, I've written my whole life, um, started with journaling, I did a lot of um, English lit classes in college, and then I took private writing classes after I got out of college, and when I had my children and they were small, when they were in school, I went to writing classes and English classes. But the most important part of my story is that um, I began writing because I couldn't not write. And I wonder if you have that passion too. Because um, I aligned, my husband and I were in the entertainment business. My husband was a writer and producer for television, and he did several television shows, some of which you may remember, um, my favorite being Beauty and the Beast for CBS with Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman. And um, he also wrote for Sliders and, and a hit movie for Disney called Man of the House with Chevy Chase and, and um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Farrah Fawcett. And so um, thank you for joining me. I see some more people are coming on the broadcast, and I'm so happy. Thank you. Um, again, I'm Sandy Peckinpah, and I am a writer, an author. I help women with the second act of their lives. But more importantly, I help people realize how important it is. Oh, wait, let me stop. have written lots of pieces over the last 12 years, Dancing Crane. Thank you for sharing that. You know, people don't, people write their whole lives and they find it difficult to call themselves a writer. And so I want you to acknowledge that in yourself, that you are a writer. If you've written for 12 years, you're a writer. So anyway, in, I, I wanted to get back to saying that um, I feel like your story is so important to launching the next part of your life. Um, I need to put the pieces together into books, stories to publish. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Yay! Okay, so in working with my husband on his scripts, I learned a lot about writing as a professional because every day he had to write no matter what. And so he developed rituals and patterns in writing that helped him structure his writing career. And um, he became very successful at it. Um, you know, it, he had a lot of hit television shows and, and I'm so proud of the shows that we did have on the air. And so I learned so much from him. He passed away in uh, 2006. And um, I felt like he gave me his legacy of writing to continue on because I learned so much. And so what I want to talk about in this scope is how to get your writing on track, how to get your story on track, 
and um, several ways, I have uh, three or four ways that might be helpful to you. So I call this right now the heart of a writer, and it's about mindset and intention today. So um, my first question to you is, well, thank you for the hearts. Oh, those, that color is beautiful. It's kind of a periwinkle blue. Um, why is it that you want to write? And that's an important question because I had to ask myself that when I wrote my first book. Um, my daughter was born with a birth defect. And I knew that when she started school, that the only thing that I could contribute as far as introducing her into the world was my writing skill. I used my writing to help start her in school. I wrote this book, Rosie the Imperfect Angel, it's a hardcover book, and it came out in 1991 or 92. And I took it to school with her and read the story to the class and it sort of explained, um, it's a fairy tale for children who feel different, but it gave her an entree as to why she had scars on her face, the surgeries that were coming up, and it gave a, a, a platform for the kids in her class to ask questions about why she had scars and <clears throat> why her face looked a little bit different. And today, through the miracle of modern medicine, she is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm so proud of her. But what I found is that when she was born, I couldn't not write. My story could no longer stay inside of me. I had to commit to writing in a big way. And I want to tell you what happened with that story a little bit later on in the broadcast. So I hope I don't forget. If, some, if I almost forget, um, remind me, I hope. So I wonder if any of you have had an experience that was so profound you felt like you had to write about it, either in a journal, can't not write or it hurts, Dancing Crane, too full of stories. That's exactly the way I felt. And I, I wrote this story with the intention that it was going to help my daughter. It also was going to heal me. And, girlfriend, thank you for joining me. Um, so, the first thing that I want to talk about is why are you writing? Your big why is so important to you being a writer. And I want to urge all of you who write to call yourself a writer because it took me years before I could call myself a writer, even though I had written my first book and helped my husband on every script he wrote for television ever. And I knew that um, it was still sort of didn't tumble off of my <laughs> my vocabulary until finally I started getting validation for my first book and I've written five or six books now and so anyway you need to know your reason why that's number one why are you writing this book for example for mine it was to give my daughter an entree into school for me it was healing it was about healing my own feelings around giving birth to a daughter who had a birth defect and the challenges that she would face and it sort of helped me work through some of those emotions. So um, the other part of that is that I wanted to help others. And that's a huge why, because I knew that my book could help other people. And that's the thing that I think people don't realize is that you're not only, it's twofold, you're not only writing for yourself, but you're writing for others too. And that's an important that's an important viewpoint when you put your work out there and also as you're writing. Why are you writing it? Because your writing is 99% about the person reading it when they're reading it. So it's really important to have that focus. Number two is you need to find a way to maintain your commitment as a writer. Now I heard on an interview that uh, Pint, Pint XO Sauce, oh, you know what, my best friend, is known as Half Pint. She was Laura Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie and Melissa Gilbert. She's my best friend in life and continues to be. Uh, Peen Cho. Okay, so it's pronounced Peen Cho. Um, anyway, I, I um, heard an interview of, uh, of Jerry Seinfeld and he said he writes one joke a day. And I think that hit me. If he could write one joke a day and... <laughs> 
all of them seem to be winners, then I could certainly write one paragraph a day. Or then it got to one paragraph, uh, two paragraphs a day, one page a day, ten pages a day. It's Spanish like me. Okay, thanks, Jay. All right. Um, thanks for joining us. So I'm talking about writing and how important it is to recognize your writing and your story. Going to Seinfeld here in Stockton. <laughs> He's so brilliant. He makes me laugh. Lucky you. Um, how important your story is to being uh, who you are and the next part of your life. So if Jerry Seinfeld can write one joke a day, you as a writer or a journalist or um, a person who likes to blog, and I have a blog also, um, that's important. Tons of ideas need to develop writing habit. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yay! And own your truth. Yes, that's absolutely true. So being a writer means setting up daily rituals. And that's number two on my list that I want to share with you. Because small chunks sounds better. It's easy to start that way. Do it. Small chunks. Commit to a paragraph a day. And you know what? Those paragraphs expand. That's the thing. Um, if you set aside a daily ritual, and I actually put it in my calendar, when I wrote my last book, which, yes, and I can talk about writer's block, and I have the perfect antidote. So, Pincho, I have the perfect antidote. So, d hopefully remind me to share that with you. This is my latest book. It's called How to Survive the Worst That Can Happen. It's a parent's step-by-step -step guide for healing after the loss of a child. Um, I lost my 16-year-old son. And again, he left me his legacy and his purpose, and that was to help others heal such a loss. And this book is his legacy because I wrote that guide to help other parents through it. And again, oh, I'm so sorry. Loss is so difficult. I'm so sorry you lost your grandma. Um, it, loss is difficult, and I knew that there was a book inside of me about it, and I couldn't stop. So that book, I scheduled every day from 4 to 8 to write my, uh, my book. And um, that's where I want to talk about writer's block, because if you schedule it, you're going to write it. You're going to sit down and write. And I have a secret that I'm going to be revealing in one of the courses that I'm doing um, about writer's block, and, and I'm so excited um, because I'm going to be doing a five-day Periscope, Periscope writing challenge, and it's absolutely free, so it's going to be coming up, and I, have, I want to share all of my writing secrets, those that I've developed on my own and those that I have developed from my husband, who was a professional writer as well as me. Um, people find my characters compelling and love the flow of my writing. Well, then you have obviously developed a wonderful writing style because that's what it's all about is developing that style that is so readable. And you know what? We, the, the thing about writing now, yes, pulled out music tracks for two hours every other day because I have to focus on Pincho Sauce. Yes. You know what? That's important because inspirational music helps me too. And that's what I did. I pulled out m music to start my daily ritual. So schedule it. Put it in your calendar. I wrote from 4 to 8 every single day. Um, the second part of a daily ritual is make your space conducive to writing. Because if you have a desk full of, of paperwork and bills, you're going to get sidetracked. Turn off your Facebook, turn off Twitter, and really focus on your writing. I light a candle, I play music in the background, and the, the music that I play, um, it's either opera or music that doesn't have words because I don't understand um, the language that opera is in usually, and but I love the emotion of it, but I deal with illness and tiredness. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I hope writing lifts you up and want to climb above this and finally finish something. And you can share that with others, how you're feeling. And that's where you're going to relate to others. Just as my book, Rosie the Imperfect Angel, um, helped young children with feelings of being different. And my book, How to Survive the, uh, the, the Worst That Can Happen, 
help parents deal with the loss of a child. Those are things that you talk about in a book that are relatable. And that's what people get excited about when they feel your emotion and the relatability. So the next in my daily rituals, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I hope that you're still with me on this, is discover ways to ignite your inspiration. And I just mentioned those. Light a candle. Go into a quiet time of two or three minutes and ask that your writing have value and purpose. And, and, and give yourself a little background of light music. Um, okay, I will keep going. Um, discover ways to ignite the inspiration that works for you. Uh, the other one is, <laughs> I always start with a cappuccino. I mean, I that's my ritual of writing. It starts with a cappuccino, music in the background, very light. Um, get out and circulate with good folks. Yes, because you know what? You hear stories that trigger your own stories and your own inspiration. And there's a trend in books right now for memoirs of ordinary people. I want to say that again. There's a trend in books right now of memoirs of ordinary people, not only celebrities, not only, you know, uh, high profile people, but ordinary people, because that's who we learn from, is the ordinary person with extraordinary circumstances. And so don't discredit your story in any way because you may feel you don't have credentials or you haven't yet found the ability to call yourself a writer. Call yourself a writer the moment you sit down and write that first paragraph. The next one, um, Ken, thank you for joining me. I am so happy. I'm getting some, a nice um, interaction on, on this scope. And I'm talking about writing and the importance of it in not only your own healing as you the process of writing, but sharing it with others in the form of a book or a blog or a scope or however you choose to scare, to, to scare it, to share it, because um, that's that's your legacy and your purpose. And so I've given a couple of writing tips so far, starting with writing is possible. You just need to know your why. The second one is daily rituals and the importance of establishing a ritual. Write the next word. Just heard that recently. Boom. Perfect. Yes. Write the next word. And that's what I said is write the next word, the next sentence, the next paragraph, and it grows, and it's miraculous, and suddenly you have a book. I wrote this book. Uh, let's see. Now, I had a full-time job, but I came home every day at 4, and yes, hang out with new words, because I love new words. As a writer, I think all writers love great words. Um, I would come home from work and I'd write from 4 to 8 every day. That was part of my daily rituals. And so part 3 is let the process of writing flow. Now here's something really critical is remember that what you're writing when you're in the flow is very different than the part of your brain that you're using to edit. So don't edit yourself. Start writing let it flow. Don't go back and read it or rewrite it. And here's the biggest tip that I got from my husband when he was writing for television and movies. Um, he said, let it marinate for a week or two after you're finished with your work and then go back and read it and edit it. And that was my job, is that after he, he and I, we, we developed characters together. So many middles, hand to find, uh, hard to find beginnings and endings. Yes, but I talk about that in my five day writing challenge is the beginning and the endings and you'll, you'll discover ways to handle that and I'm hope, I'm hoping that you'll do that. I haven't scheduled a date because I wanted to be on here talking about writing to gather a few of you that might be interested and if you're interested, um, the stories expand, I love it, but still, yes, um, I want to expand those thoughts for you, and that's why got middle. Yeah, um, I'm not quite. Oh, you have the middle, but you're not sure about the beginning and the endings, and that's what we talk about is story arc. That's what I learned in my husband's work and me working with him in writing and creating characters, and we did that together. Um, again, his work was 
renowned. We were nominated for an Emmy for one of his, my favorite shows that he ever did was called Beauty and the Beast with Ron Perlman and Linda Hamilton on CBS. He wrote Silk Stockings um, on USA Network and CBS Network. Uh, he wrote... Um, uh, he wrote um, Sliders, a sci-fi show, which I also was a recurring character in because I also did acting. And um, I, uh, uh, oh, just messed around. Okay, gotcha. Um, you remember that show, okay? It was one of my favorites. And my husband was on the first season and helped create the characters in the show. And um, beautiful, beautiful story, love story. It was my favorite. And so in learning from him, um, you marinate what you write before you go in and edit it. So I would never edit the same day I wrote. Okay, say I wrote three paragraphs in a day um, because it became part of my daily ritual, right? And so... What I did was I would wait till the next day to reread it. And then I could talk about editing it in my left brain because the right brain flows while you're writing and the left brain is the critical part. So don't mix it up. Don't try and edit yourself on the day, same day that you're writing. Um, so also, oh gosh, you know what? I wanted to share with you and I don't have the link to it, but uh, Balboa Press, which is an ar uh, arm of Hay House Publishing, asked me to write a blog about writing. And I'll share that with you, um, that link with you in the next uh, Periscope because um, it had several hints for writers that I think might be helpful to you. So anyway, um, again, don't edit because the uh, critical edi editing mind is different than the creative mind. So um, my other, my fourth tip is give yourself an end date. Now, I hope you commit to starting your writing tomorrow. I hope that that's your beginning date. So if you can set an end date, I promise you, you're going to be flowing with, yes, a deadline. You're going to be flowing. You're going to be so excited about that end date. Visualize the end date of how you're going to feel when you have a manuscript that you're proud of or blogs that you're proud of. Even if you start with a blog, yes, just finish. And if you give yourself an end date, which it can also be an expiration date, you know, whatever you want to call it, you are going to have a target that feels so good to you creatively, you're going to come alive with the possibility. And so I want to finish this because I don't want to keep you too much longer by again sharing. I'm going to be doing a five-day Periscope writing challenge and I'm going to couple that with emails out to you with worksheets. So you're going to have so much to work with. I write with others to help me be accountable. Dancing Crane. You know, that's a, I love that. I love that handle, Dancing Crane. Um, that is really exciting. St um, I, I hope you can, I think I follow you actually. I think I followed you this morning because I think you were on Bonnie Frank's um, Periscope and I'm learning so much from her about Periscope. But I want to finish this with a story about, remember when I told you in the beginning that your why is to help yourself heal, possibly, to help someone else heal, and you don't know the broader picture. Um, this girlfriend, better to finish something mediocre than to never have a... Uh, yes, absolutely. Cut off point. Yes, I'm so glad to get this input because this is helping other people on this broadcast. We have to talk more for another reason. Okay, all right, sounds good. Um, so maybe that's a good time to uh, say that my I am at Sandy Peckinpah. I wrote the Literary Compendium and Helpers Network newsletter for CB. <gasps> what? That's crazy. This is such a small world. Wow. Okay. Um, here I am at Sandy Peckinpah. And um, I'm on Twitter and Periscope at that. And then I want to finish with telling you that you don't know the broader picture and here's my favorite thing that ever happened as the broader picture on this book Rosie the Imperfect Angel when I wrote that I wrote it for my daughter 
I wrote it to help myself heal and her be introduced into the world as a child with a birth defect. I wrote it to give other children the opportunity to know what it likes to, is like to feel different and maybe acknowledge that difference in themselves and be proud. I took that book into the schools with my best friend Melissa Gilbert of Little House on the Prairie. And we read it all over Los Angeles, all over. We went to Chicago. We read the book many places. We were on television, um, on um, Faith Daniels Today Show, um, uh, Good Morning America. Uh, My Susan Illustrated, Scat the Cat along those lines. Wow, awesome. Um, so when Melissa and I went into the schools, there was a little boy in sixth grade. And... He listened to Rosie the Imperfect Angel, and which is now out of print, unfortunately, but um, he listened to it. 20 years later, I got a phone call from that boy, and I didn't know him then, but he said, Sandy, this is Michael Alden, and you wrote the book, Rosie the Imperfect Angel. I was one of the little boys at the school in Hidden Hills, And I listened to your story, and it felt so good to know that other people felt different. Thank you for the hearts. He said, I'm a music producer now, and I want to do this book as a spoken word CD, as my gift to others, other children like me who feel different. And so, this makes me cry. Michael recorded Rosie the Imperfect Angel with Melissa Gilbert as the voice reading it. Marley Matlin wrote the, I know, (laughs) Marley Matlin wrote the liner notes for it. And um, Michael wrote the music and the music was played by the Moscow Symphony Orchestra. No one got paid a dime on that. Um, what happened was Michael did it all for free to put it out there for other children. Thank you. It is amazing. Um, for other children who felt different. And do you know it made it to the Grammy ballot in 2009? So I guess thank you for the hearts because that is my pride and joy. It is the reason that I write. That is the broader picture that when you're writing your book, you don't know that this exists. You don't know that there's a little boy in sixth grade who feels different. And 20 years later, he wants to record it for other children. I am so grateful. And so Michael is actually a music producer on Broadway. He's won so many Tonys. He's won Emmys for a show on PBS. He's so successful today, and I am so very proud of him, and he is now a personal friend of mine. Um, I am just so grateful. But anyway, that's my story, and I want to give that to you as power and incentive to you to write your story because you never know who it's going to touch, and I promise you there is someone out there who will be changed by what you write. I promise. And so look for my, um, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you never know how a few of your words can impact the world. So true. Thank you for that. And follow me again at Sandy Peckinpah on Twitter, and I'm going to be announcing my five-day writing challenge. I've got it all written. I'm just, I'm finishing up some of the worksheets. This is for you this is for those of you. B and B used to hospital burn you. Oh wow, wow! I didn't know that, huh? Wow. See, we didn't know how Beauty and the Beast would affect other people either. I remember being up at night with my husband writing storylines. You know, trying to figure out where was the heart of the story that would make a difference in people's lives, and that's one of them. Wow. Oh, I'm so touched. This Periscope, thank you so much for joining me on this. I am, I feel so full. Um, wow. Okay. So my writing challenge is coming up. Five day writing challenge, uh, Periscope challenge. It's free. Nothing to buy. Um, and if you want to actually contact me with your email address and I can even email you when it's going to start. Very simple. Sandy at sandypeckinpah.com. 
sandy at sandypeckenbaugh.com is my, is my email. And I can, um, thank you, Pincho. Thank you. Um, and I can write you, um, an email when you're ready if you want to start with the writing challenge with me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My hope for you is that this has inspired you to start writing. Um, Jay, if you could uh, put message that address to me in a Twitter message or my email, either one so I won't forget it. And it's going to start, and I'm so excited because I know that your story has value and purpose. It's your legacy. It will bring... It will bring your story to life and you have no idea of the impact that it can make. Okay? So thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful you stuck with me. And oh my gosh, thank you so much for all the hearts. I might have tipped over into 5,000 hearts. I'm not sure. I hope so. You know, when I started Periscope, I had like one heart on the first one. And I thought, oh, it's going to be forever to get into the thousands. And my goodness, I... (laughs) I'm so grateful for all these hearts. I almost don't want to sign off, but um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So thank you again. I'll be back. I'm going to keep periscoping. My friend Liberty joined. Liberty, yay, who is a fantastic writer, by the way. Follow Liberty Forrest. She's a fantastic writer, and she inspires me. So um, let's, writers unite on Periscope. Here we are. We're ready to get Uh, started making an impact on the world and I love you all for staying with me and um, I'll be back. Bye-bye.